Hi everybody, Cheaply Chic, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm sharing a basic junk journal cover tutorial that I use to create journals on a regular basis. This style is nothing new, but many of you asked me to share my process, so that's what I'm doing here today. So jumping right into the tutorial, I'm using the following products today. This fabric is actually a curtain panel that I picked up at Goodwill. I have found that secondhand shops are one of my favorite places to pick up fabric for my journals. I love finding vintage curtains because I feel like they make the most unique covers. I also like using book covers, actual book board for the covers in my books. These are only a dollar at the Dollar Tree, so I usually pick mine up there. For the spine in my journal, I'm going to use the material from these vintage file dividers because I already have them on hand. Chipboard is a perfect material as well. You can purchase thicker pieces of chipboard online. I will actually link an Amazon link down below to some that I have purchased and used. Or if you have a thinner chipboard, you can double it up and achieve a thicker piece, which is what I will be doing with these files. I also wanted to make mention of my all-time favorite glue that I will be using throughout this entire project. Fabri-Tac or Fabri-Fix, depending on where you buy it, is an acetone-based glue that works wonders on fabric and paper. Because it isn't water-based, like most craft glues, it doesn't warp the paper when I use it on various steps of journal making. I love it and I couldn't live without it, but I'm sure there are other glues that work too. This is what I will be using and have the most experience with. So getting started here, I'm cutting the cover off of my book to use for the journal. I just happened to be using a book where I have already removed the block and I probably shouldn't have done that for those who are just getting started and that might be a bit confusing. But I want to say that it doesn't really matter and it doesn't make any real difference. I just already had this on hand. Many times I have simply cut the front and back covers off of a book with the pages still intact, no problem. There's no reason to cut out the pages first, so don't worry about that. Just grab your scissors or X-Acto and cut those covers off. Now I'm just cutting my files to use for my spine. I decide to make my spine two and a half inches. I'm going to sew in eight thin signatures, which I will show in the next video coming in a couple days. Because this material is on the thinner side, I will cut two pieces and glue them together. This will help reinforce and strengthen the spine as well as help it not warp. I also forgot to mention, I'm making the spine the same height as the book covers and mine happen to be eight and a half inches. Now I'm just laying out my front and back covers along with the spine onto my fabric and I'm roughly going to cut out the fabric. If you want to get precise with this, you can. I like the ease of just laying out my elements and cutting out a piece that I will be working with. Making a cover like this is very forgiving with measurements, which is one of the things that I love about it. I just like to make sure that I'm leaving about an inch to an inch and a half on all sides so that I know I have enough fabric to work with. Once you feel that you have it all ready and laid out properly, we're just going to grab our Fabri-Tac and glue these pieces down. I also feel like mentioning here that if I were going to use a thinner piece of fabric, I would use heat and bond to adhere a double layer of fabric to help thicken it up and make sure that none of the glue shows through the cover of my book. I usually use a muslin for that and the heat and bond I pick up at Walmart. Because I chose a thick material, I know that I'm not going to have an issue with that. I will film a future video sharing that process because I actually do it frequently when I'm working with thinner cotton fabric, so keep an eye out for that. Until then, if you're brand new and you want to try this out for the first time, I would grab a thicker material just so you're not disappointed if you end up seeing glue with your finished product. Here I'm just trimming up the edges of my cover so they're nice and smooth. Sometimes if you leave a ragged edge on your cover, you can feel it in the spine of your book later. This is being really picky here, but I just enjoy feeling the smooth edges of a journal, so I'm trimming them up here. 
You'll also see that I used a ruler. That was so I could show you watching the video that I usually leave about a quarter of an inch gap between the spine and the covers. This is something that you actually learn to eyeball pretty easily. But for the sake of the video, I wanted you to see that there's about a quarter of an inch between the spine and each cover. Now that I have everything in place, I'm going to trim all around the edges, leaving about an inch to an inch and a half on all sides. This is going to help create a nice, even edge to glue to the inside of our cover. We also want to try to get them as straight as possible because that's going to help us create our book corners more easily. Next, we're going to cut our corners at a diagonal, staying about a quarter of an inch away from the book covers. This is going to make sure that we don't have any bulk on our finished corners. We also need to make sure that we don't cut too close to the corners of our book covers because then we wouldn't have enough fabric to cover our corners and that would present a problem too. So this comes with a little practice, but more is better than less. So if you have too much, no worries. It can usually be trimmed off after you glue your edges down. But I would say aim for about a quarter of an inch of fabric left to the edge of the book. Next, we're going to finish gluing on our fabric. I like to make sure that the glue is covering all edges of my cover, my book board, so if I need to add more underneath, I do. I tend to glue down the left and right sides of my cover first, and then work the top and the bottom edges. This will give all of your corners a similar finished look. Just make sure that you're using enough glue to get all of the edges down and try to work it in a tight fashion. Here I'm just using a baby wipe to clean up any extra glue, always handy to have around. This acetone glue gets really sticky. You really want to make sure that you're paying attention to your corners. I like to make sure that there's enough glue on the fabric to help hold my fold in place. That will help the shape of my corner when I'm folding up the bottom of this fabric flap. So just make sure you're using enough glue and paying attention to those corners. And now we're just going to fold up our last two edges. I like to make sure that I'm paying attention to the joints of my cover, if that's what you call them. It might not be necessary, but I like to work the fabric into those spaces just a little bit to try to avoid any fabric bulk in the folds of my spine later. Just a little something I like to do and you see me doing here.
You'll also notice that I'm working from the center, pushing the fabric down and then pushing my way to the outside of the cover. I feel like this helps avoid any bumps left over in the fabric and it helps me form the shape of my corners. Now I'm going to very carefully trim the excess fabric from my corners. Again, don't cut too close to the book board. You don't want to expose it underneath. Don't ask me how I know I've done this more times than I like to count. You can use your fabric glue to glue down any excess you have, which I end up doing here as well. I like making sure there's extra glue on these edges because it'll help avoid any fraying over time. And that is the outside of our cover. I'm very pleased with this one. So now let's get started on the inside. Next, I'm going to cut the inside paper that I'm using on the inside of the journal. I like to leave about a quarter of an inch gap to the edge of the book, so measurements will depend on the size of journal you're making. My papers measure seven and three quarter inches by four and a half inches. Now I've decided to add a little ink to the edges to give it more of a finished look. I have also used my sewing machine to add a decorative edge to these panels in the past. Just be creative here and finish them off however you would like. I've decided to add a permanent closure to the inside of this cover, so I'm going to glue this piece of lace to the center of my journal before adding anything else. I didn't measure this piece of lace, I just made sure that I left it long enough to be able to tie my closure in a bow after my journal is complete. I like to fold my lace in half to find the center and then try my best to glue that middle of the lace to the center of my spine, again working my way toward the outside of the cover. Once again fabric glue is awesome here. Next, I decide that I'm going to use a piece of this old feed sack for the inside of the spine. I like using fabric here instead of paper because paper tends to break and tear where fabric is very flexible and our cover will be able to open and close with ease. I end up cutting my fabric seven and three quarter inches tall, the same height as my paper, so they'll match up when I glue them down. I also wanted this to overlap my paper and be on top, so I made it five inches wide. You can see that I'm using a rotary cutter here in my craft mat, but if you don't have a rotary cutter, scissors will work fine. Just mark your fabric out with a ruler, measure it out, and cut. I've decided that this time I want my paper to be underneath my fabric spine. Either way makes a beautiful cover. I've done both. 
I am just going to glue down my papers and then my fabric, finishing off the edges with some pretty trim. I want to make sure to mention here, because I'm adding the closure to the inside of my cover, I made sure to use a heavy piece of cardstock instead of thinner scrapbook paper for the cover insides. We don't want to use thin paper and then have it separate from our cover with use, or worse, tear. If you add your closure inside like this, just be sure to use cardstock and glue it to the closure well. Now we're going to glue down the spine. Again, you will want to glue down the center first. This is going to make sure everything lays flat and even. Glue down your center and then work on one side at a time. Again, I do like to pay attention to the inside crease of my cover. Because my fabric is thick, I don't want to push it in that crevice too deep. My cover would have a hard time closing then. I want to make sure that it's adhered just enough that my cover can close easily. And now I'm just going around and making sure those edges are glued down well. I don't want my fabric to fray. Now for the finishing touch, I have this beautiful trim that my sweet friend Rhonda sent me. Thank you, Rhonda. I love this so much. And I'm going to add that to the edges of my feed sack fabric. And that's it, a simple fabric junk journal cover. Be on the lookout for the next video in this series where I will share how I add my signatures to this journal. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I hope you found this video insightful and helpful for creating your own journal covers. 
please don't forget to hit that like button to let me know that you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already to enjoy more junk journal videos in the future, and I will see you all next time. Bye!